Good morning, everyone, and welcome to uh, the Fosen PhD Dev Room. So we're gonna start in uh, basically one minute. <laughs> so um, our first uh, speaker is uh, Deb Bisking yes. right, from yes. the FreeBSD Foundation, and uh, she will talk us oh. how mm. the FreeBSD Foundation changed the world. That's it. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> So, okay. okay, thank you. <laughs> so, um, so I'm Deb Goodkin, and I'm the <coughs> executive director of the FreeBSD Foundation. And so uh, what I want to do is talk about the foundation, the work that we do, and then, um, and then close it with what we're doing to change the world and make it a better world. So can everyone hear me okay? We don't have a mic. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, so who all in this room likes or is interested in FreeBSD. Okay, wow, there's a lot of hands that aren't up right now. So who's here for um, OpenBSD? Okay, a couple of people, and then NetBSD? Okay, and then uh, uh, just in other reasons that you might be here for, and like, and so what are some of those reasons? What, like, just. S setting horizon? Extending my horizon. Oh, extending hori your horizon. Okay. Okay. And how about you? It's interesting. And uh, also a free space in my schedule. So okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad we could fill that for you. <laughs> okay. So what I'm going to do is, so uh, starting with, this is our mission. It's basically, so the foundation is here to support the FreeBSD project in community worldwide. You need to and send over there so oh. Oh, okay, so how far are we allowed to go? Uh, <laughs> up until the, if, from where you're standing to the left. It's, and so, okay, so if I want to see my slides, I might want to be more over here. Okay, so uh, I'm going to start with a little bit about our history. And so I'll, start, I'll kick it off with a, a short little story. And it starts with, um, it's back in about 1993, and a few decades ago. And a young college student was at University of California at Berkeley and was a computer science major and got a, a summer internship at a company called Walnut CD, Walnut, Walnut, no, Wind River, I guess Wind River back then. Should probably get my story straight. And, um, and so was introduced to FreeBSD. And, um, and had some good role models who were actually working there at the time. And, um, and so some of the original uh, starters or founders of FreeBSD were there. And, um, and so in, and then in the same year, 1993, he was actually asked to join the, the core team, which is the core team is sort of like the uh, top level or they, they sort of oversee the project they help with developer relationships and, and issues that might come up. So he was part of that team. And, um, and at the time, uh, so I think it was Walnut, Walnut CD-ROM is what the company was called. And they wanted, they owned the FreeBSD trademark, the logo and, and the w actual word FreeBSD. And so they wanted to hand it off to the project and ha let them own it. And the project just was an organization made up of volunteers. And so they couldn't really take ownership of a legal property like that. And so, uh, so this person, his name is Justin Gibbs. And um, he, so he had been, so this was um, actually, so this was in 1999. So he had been with the project for seven years at that time. And he was now, he was graduated, um, he was grown up. And he was actually in a serious relationship and was considering marriage and looking in long term having children and not being able to volunteer as much as he was able to on the project. And so, so he started investigating how can we own this, this IP, this trademark. And he started looking into nonprofits and came up with um, the idea of maybe I sh you know, the way I can give back to the project is to start this a nonprofit that could actually own the IP, and but and also continue indefinitely to support the project as a legal entity, 
And so he actually started the FreeBSD Foundation, and it was in 2000. And, um, and the primary um, you know, goal of it was, was really to, to own the IP. And um, so we were, let's see if this is working right, or oops, over here. Uh, so we were founded in March of 2000, so we're almost 18 years now, if I could add correctly in my head. And um, we're a 501c3. So you'll, um, there's other foundations that support open source projects and uh, there's, uh, in the BSD world, you have the NetBSD Foundation, the OpenBSD Foundation, but you also hear other ones like the uh, Linux Foundation. And one way that we're different is that we, um, I, I mean, a good comparison would be the FreeBSD Foundation and the Linux Foundation. And because uh, since we have similar names, that people might think that we're run um, very similarly. And we are actually a public nonprofit, and our whole purpose is to serve as a public charity and to support the FreeBSD project. And whereas the Linux Foundation is a 501c6, and so it means that they're a, um, like a, a trade association. And so their primary purpose is to support the industry, the commercial users, the, the actual corporations. And that's why you'll see that they have members, and the members pay uh, usually pay quite a bit of money to become part of that organization. And so even though we, the, the only way that we're sustainable is by also taking, we take donations, and that's what allows us to, uh, to do the work that we do. And we're in, um, so we were headquartered in Boulder, Colorado in the United States, and we actually just moved to Longmont, which is the next town over. So who are we? And so we... Um, we have a board of directors that govern the organization. When we first started, back in 2000, we had three board members, and it was basically just to, that's what you needed in order to run a corporation. And so, um, so you may see some familiar faces here. Uh, and so just to, Justin Gibbs is the one who founded the foundation, and he's still, um, supports us, he's part of the board, and uh, Benedict Richling, he is at, he's here, he's actually helping run the FreeBSD stand downstairs, and then we have board members who are located all around the world. And then the people who actually do the work of the foundation is, this is my team, and so you see me up in the upper left-hand corner, and, um, and then um, many of you may be familiar with Ed Mast, and he oversees a lot of the software development that we do and um, or support and then the, a lot of the, the technical work that we do. And, uh, and then a whole team of people that support different efforts that I'll talk about. So what is our purpose? It's really to help make FreeBSD you know, the best platform for any use that you may have from commercial users creating products to schools, from universities doing research and also teaching with FreeBSD, to people who, who want to play with it on their computer and, and play with it and use it, really. So, so that's, that's what we're here to do. So what we support, I keep forgetting the thing is down here. Uh, so software development, we, I have software developers on my staff and um, and then we do actually do a lot of advocacy and education. And I'll go into more detail on each of these. We also have people that are part of the security team. We have the release engineering responsibility. Uh, we have the lead release engineer uh, on our staff. And then also we support the FreeBSD infrastructure, which that actually means that we buy the servers that are located around the world. And we also maintain, help maintain them and we'll upgrade. And then we provide technical leadership in, in different aspects from, uh, it might be Ed who facilitates a lot of different calls, which it might be storage, it might be graphics, and, and just different areas of the operating system support and community, as well as helping with, um, like coming up with uh, better improved methods of maybe release engineering or some of the different, the different teams that are part of the FreeBSD project. 
and then we and then our our beginnings is legal. So not only do we own the FreeBSD IP, but if uh, the core team needs any legal help, and usually that might be in uh, questions on patents, it might be NDAs, uh, just questions that they may have, then we will provide legal uh, guidance for them. So we don't have any lawyers on staff, but um, but we do have uh, some lawyers that we work with. And then the last thing are face-to-face -face meetings that we support. So this would be one of them. Where, so Well, yesterday we actually had a, a FreeBSD Developer Summit, and we had 22 people who attended that. And we started at 9, and we went till 5.30. And uh, it was a long day, and we actually got a lot done. We basically sat in a circle and had many discussions, and I felt they were really productive. And so it's a great way to get people, developers and contributors, and, or, and people who are just interested in learning about the BSDs and free BSD to work face to face to talk and to um, come up with ideas. And I think that's where you get that passion, that energy, and, and then you carry that back to wherever you're working or located. So, um, and then it also includes uh, meeting with commercial users and finding out what, uh, what their needs are and also what um, it, we bring some of those. Um, those needs back to the community on these are things like maybe features that they would like to see in FreeBSD. So we bring that information back. So going into more detail, so some of the um, OS, the software, uh, the operating system improvements that we've, we're currently working on, we have, uh, so like I said earlier, we have internal software developers on staff, and, um, and so that's on the bottom part of this chart. And then the, we also do um, outside projects, outside uh, funded projects that we might um, project manage or they actually may be, um, um, have a, like a technical facilitator who's outside of my staff and who's managing those projects. And so right now we have uh, uh, OpenZFS project that's currently going on, um, some Wi-Fi work that's laying the foundations for some continued work. And, um, and, and so anyway, so I'm not gonna go through each project here, but, it's, but it's to give you an idea of the work that we're doing internally, as well as uh, funding outside of our internal staff, since we are pretty small. On the bottom though, that's having the team of people, and we have, um, well, we have two full-time software engineers, and then we have other people that can jump in. And, uh, and so some of the things that we're working on right now is uh, like the current security issue that everyone's aware of, that having a team, um, they're able to actually quickly jump on this and, um, and help mitigate and put in some change, you know, fixes, workarounds, whatever we need to get um, the changes out and, and keep FreeBSD secure and stable. So it's really helpful having people on staff that you can actually say, you know, please go work on this, as well as providing technical guidance to uh, people who are also helping from the project. We also, one thing that I didn't include in the initial slide of uh, my staff is we actually have interns on staff. And so I don't keep their pictures because we rotate through interns every four months. And so they change. And this is up in our, we actually have a Canadian office. And so we keep two interns on staff there. And every four months, we get two new from the university there. And we're, real, and we're looking at growing that program. Like in, in Boulder, we have a local university. And I'd like to bring in some interns from, from our, our local school. And, um, but it's really nice because when we're working on something, uh, we may be talking about how do we implement, how do we support this feature? And there will be various ways that you can implement this. And, um, and so it might involve maybe doing some initial testing. And so it's great because as we sort of process this, and we'll be on calls since we're all remote, and, um, and so we'll have some ideas. And, and so just like putting in a, you know, a hack, uh, which isn't really the, the FreeBSD philosophy, uh, we'll actually put the interns on to run the test. And so they're, they're learning, and they're actually contributing and it's, it's a great, um, it's really a benefit to us in the project to have these people on, on our staff to be able to just go jump in and do this work for us. As far as FreeBSD advocacy, 
Um, the, so the FreeBSD project had a market, like a, th they had a marketing committee. They have many different committees, and um, and what we found was that yeah you know, they weren't able to really respond very um, in a timely manner. Plus, um, you know, most people want to develop and contribute in either software and or at documentation or just different areas. And so I had brought on a marketing person to help not only us, but actually mostly help the project. And so she's full time and she really looks at, I mean, almost all her work she does is for FreeBSD. And it's, um, and so from the list that I have here, um, areas that we've really expanded is, is getting out to more like conferences and events. So, so this is a great example that uh, we have more people here, we help, um, so even though we're, the foundation did not, well, we got the, the stand that's downstairs, and please make sure that you stop by it. Uh, and, but uh, we try to get local, like FreeBSD contributors and volunteers to come and help promote FreeBSD. And, and the whole purpose is really, it's to recruit people to the project, so people who are, like, who are coming in and they might be interested in learning something. It, what is FreeBSD? What are the BSDs? Which one? would I even want to be involved with if, if I was interested? And, um, and what's the community like, too? So, so, uh, so I always see it as like t two main purposes. One would be recruit new users and contributors, and, um, and the second would be to uh, get more users of FreeBSD. And so it may be just an individual who's going to try FreeBSD and play around with it, or it may be a corporation who is going to use it in either a product or product development or even in their data center. So, so anyway, I, so as far as conferences, we've, uh, we've stepped into some new regions. I went to China last year. It was pretty amazing as far as what the use is there. We wouldn't even know as a project and, uh, because they have their own um, forums and mirrors and everything. And so... Uh, so it was really interesting to find. And then India and Africa and Singapore that we've been reaching into. And that's uh, giving presentations on FreeBSD, and it's also giving workshops on FreeBSD. And we're, and we're trying to get more volunteers, more FreeBSD contributors to give these workshops and presentations. And then um, uh, another thing that we do is we publish... The, this is the FreeBSD journal. And so, so we always print hard copies when we come out with a major release. So when we have 11.0, then uh, we print this. So actually, it's a great magazine that's uh, it's, uh, professionally produced. And uh, it's, a, it's actually a great way it's to get information about you know, Unix-like type of operating systems, but as well as writing articles yourself and contributing. And so it's, we have a, um, a professional editor for it, and so it's a very well done uh, magazine. So please make sure that you take one if you don't have one, and, um, and, but otherwise it's a digital, digital copy. So does anyone here in this room actually get the journal? So I see one. Okay, a few, a few hands. Okay. I hope, like maybe eventually, like everyone in the room will raise their hand. So, any, so, but please make sure that you take one from downstairs. And well, we have a few up here too. And um, and then just uh, creating uh, more advocacy material, and that's from just handouts on what is FreeBSD and why you should get involved with the project, and if and then how you get involved with the project. And so we have this material that's available for anyone to either print off of our website. We will ship things to people too. We have stickers and, and pens and things that when you do meetups and, or maybe a hackathon or user groups, then we will, we're happy to provide that type of material to people. And last thing is training education. We're trying to help uh, grow the amount of curriculum out there and working internally on workshops. And one, thing, one reason I want to bring it internal and locally is to put together some introduction workshops to FreeBSD. So it may be for technical people and it may be for people who aren't technical and just to expose them and educate them about FreeBSD or even just use it as a platform. So there are people out there, they may teach like, a, I don't know, website design 
and it's, but it's running on FreeBSD. And so it's a great way to, you're teaching something else, but it's running on this platform that it's, it works. And, and so hopefully uh, people will be curious about what FreeBSD going forward on that. We do have a demo downstairs on our, on our table. Uh, it's our Raspberry Pi 3 running FreeBSD. I set that up. Um, and uh, it's a fun little toy to play with. And, um, and so I always encourage people who like to do that type of thing. Um, I like hardware, and so I love playing <laughs> with, with things like that. So, so anyway, go, go check that out. Um, some of the upcoming events. Um, I, just, I included this slide just so people would see some things that are coming up that to go to, to, some of these are ones that maybe you wouldn't go to, but they're like, um, uh, Foz, uh, Scale's a great one in, in uh, the West Coast of the U.S., but like Apricot in Nepal, um, we will be there. And, it, but in India, RuConf is a great conference. These are ones more for regional that we really try to get the people in that area, expose them, teach them about FreeBSD. But other ones like um, the, the actual BSD conferences, like MeetBSD and EuroBSDCon, which will be, these are actual dates in Romania. And we have, we have this information on our website, too. And then, uh, and then another area that we support is the, um, the security team, release engineering, and the infrastructure. And these are some of the things that, um, that we're supporting. I think the biggest thing is it, with release engineering is having someone full time on the releases and aware of what's going on and, uh, and is available to either fix issues um, if, if um, you know, come out with a new release if, if there is an issue and, um, and trying to keep on top of uh, when the next release should be out. And we are working on trying to improve that process too. And then the security team, actually Ed Mast, who is on my staff, he just joined the security team. He's the, de the deputy security officer. And so, uh, so now we have someone who's actually paid who's assisting the security team. And so that's going to be very beneficial to the project. So I'm going to try to speed up a little bit more so we <clears throat> have more time at the end. But, um, and then, like I spoke about earlier, the face-to-face -face opportunities. And it's from those conferences like EuroBSDCon, which I would encourage people to go to. Um, but we also have travel grants that you could apply for. And so if you want to attend one of these conferences, but you're strapped for, for money, you can't afford to travel there, or your company's not sending you, then you can apply for a travel grant through us. And, um, and if you're approved, then we'll help you with your expenses. So some of our plans um, uh, for this year is to help with the testing and quality assurance, more automated testing, and we're hoping to bring someone on staff to help with that. Uh, we're going to have a university ambassador program, so we're going to identify a few universities, especially this year, to get started, and we'll have representatives at those universities that will run meetups, and we'll also provide that material for them, and so just to get FreeBSD and more universities. And then, um, and then if you work for a company here, we have a partnership benefit program. And so what we're working on is, is getting more uh, corporate donors and working on partnerships with them. And so it means that we just provide more support for those, those corporations. And producing more material. And that's, that's one thing that I'm personally involved with. So anyway, so how are we changed in the world? And when I first started with uh, the foundation, and I'm running a nonprofit, and you always think of a nonprofit as something that's feeding the world, or um, you know, we're, a nonprofit's do, doing something that's good for the world, making a positive difference. And so I'm so I'm running this this corporation, and I'm thinking, you know, I'm, we're supporting Netflix, and you, you think of these large corporations who are using FreeBSD and benefiting from FreeBSD too. And, um, and, and I knew that, well, you know, our purpose as a nonprofit isn't to make Netflix more money. But I also saw that by helping make FreeBSD the best operating system, it's, and by these companies using it, it actually shows, it sort of validates the work that people are doing. That's very important. And it sustains for the, you know, the product, the, the operating system. 
So, but going even further than that, I was really just thinking, like, what, what are we doing that's making this world a better place? And why, you know, as a nonprofit, how are we giving back to the world? And so I, so I listed a few things here. And, and so I think that, like, the biggest um, area I see, and, and everyone's going to see something differently, but really having this free operating system that anyone can use. And so if you're interested in systems programming or, or you're interested in understanding operating systems, that you can just get the source code and you can look at it. Um, when I was in college, which was quite a few years ago, um, you know, I, I did not have that um, ability. I mean, it was before open source was available, and we, couldn't, we didn't look at source code, and it was, we were developing it ourselves. And my first few jobs were uh, with corporations that we, I mean, well, I didn't. I wasn't a software developer developer, I was a firmware developer. So anyway, but it was all proprietary stuff. So anyway, so you can actually, you're taking an operating systems class, and, um, and you can actually look at, well, how was FreeBSD designed? And if they really thought it was such a great design, why, you know, why? And you can look at it, and you can, ch and you can implement your own code, and you can try it out. And say there's a cool feature you want to implement, you can do it. And so you're not at a corporation where they're telling you exactly what you have to do. You could try something, and maybe no one else is interested in that, but you could try it, you, and you know, and, and you can commit it. Um, so anyway, there's a lot of opportunity for learning for growth, and you get um, really real-world job skills by doing this. So, um, so not only from working as a team member, collaborating with people. Uh, that was one thing that we were doing yesterday was collaboration. Another example was uh, someone who who was interested in the area of FreeBSD and decided no one was really leading this effort. And so he, said, he decided he was going to take this effort on. And so it meant that he was going to be the project manager for this, team, this group. And he didn't, he didn't have that experience of being uh, like a project manager. And so he was actually asking for guidance in our meeting yesterday. And I thought it was actually a great example of someone, if you're at a corporation, especially a large corporation, you wouldn't have that opportunity. You would really have to grow into that. You're, you become a leader at first, not as the actual like leader. You grow into that with having those skills. And so you, could, you have this opportunity to step into roles that you see are available and take that on because, because most people are volunteers. And so, um, and so everyone embraces, like, thank God so-and-so is taking this over. And let's help him. And you know, and, and maybe he'll fail. But even if he does, he'll learn from that experience. So, uh, so it's a great way to really, you know, work on things that you're interested in, to take on leadership roles, and to grow into uh, becoming a leader in the project or in a particular area. And um, and that's when. And so, that's what FreeBSD offers. And the foundation helps by we're supporting all these different areas that I talked about earlier. So, um, and, and then the last thing really is just the fact that, just like the Raspberry Pi I have downstairs, uh, we can run on these really expensive, they're basically com computers. And we can go into impoverished areas, and people could, they get the operating system for free, they get a very inexpensive computer. It's something that maybe we could even provide for them. And we could teach computing skills, and people could get those skills. And so, uh, so it's, Provides this this free this free product. You don't have to buy, you know, Windows. You don't have to buy, uh, you know, a proprietary type of operating system. So I know I don't have much time, um, but I was going to have a Q and A session, and uh, so I have like a minute and a half. I have like a minute, <laughs> but uh, but also I was just going to say that you know um, I'll be here for the two days, and so please come up to me if you have any questions. I'm here to actually support the project, and so anything that we could do, that's, I'm here to find out. But I do have a question in the back. What is the view of the foundation about the commercial support for PBSD, and maybe what are the challenges in that direction? So what is our view of uh, com like commercial support for FreeBSD, and do we want to change the direction? The what are the challenges? Oh, the challenges. Well, so um, we would love to see so <laughs> we would love to see a company out there or people, consultants out there who provide support for FreeBSD. Because that's what you're talking about, like a red hat type of, 
Yeah, um, the foundation, uh, we have thought about, uh, you know, we, um, we, we meet all the time and we talk about you know, what we could do first to get more income to help us, and, um, but also how we could support the project better, and that's something that we do discuss, and that would, it, it would ha we would have to change in order to do that. Um, but anyway, it's, we would love to see uh, people or a company uh, support FreeBSD. Companies do ask for it. Uh, and so it's, I, I see it as an opportunity. And so, uh, but my time's up. <laughs> and so, but I want to thank everyone for being patient sitting through my talk. And, um, and I think having the opportunity to do this. But please approach me with any type of questions or anything you'd like to talk about. Thank you.